Oh, 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 there you are. <laughs> well, boys and girls, it was a crazy Saturday afternoon. Let me tell you, if you would like, please. Uh, my heart was so warmed earlier today. We had a fan roundtable award show. It was fun from minute none to from minute one to minute none. Uh, Ms. Sparks, uh, if you got a chance, take an hour out of your time. Go take a look see on the YouTube. We are idiots. We are total idiots. And we had so much fun on the fan roundtable. But that was then. This is now. Boys and girls, look at who I got. This is stirring the pot with Don Kincaid. And my very special guest, it's a returning Jacqueline Sparks. Thank you so much for coming in, hanging out with us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You know, uh, there was a couple people that immediately reached out when I said, hey, man, uh, I haven't done an STP in a while. What's good? Yourself was right on top of this. And I cannot appreciate that uh, enough. That's very kind of you. And I really do appreciate it. I'll take any chance to talk about myself I can get. Oh, hey, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's fantastic. Because I just figured it was a one and done. And I know everybody says, yeah, we'll do a follow up. We'll do. I always think, who the fuck wants to talk to me again? <laughs> so you know what? I appreciate the follow up. And this is going to be some fun. Absolutely. Uh, so I know uh, it's been, and, and I tell you, it feels like it's been a minimum. And I do mean a minimum of a year since we last spoke with Miss Sparks, but it's only been six months. Uh, back in May, we yep. hung out. We talked to the champ. Look at that beautiful belt on the beautiful champ. And uh, so what we're doing, she's coming back on. We're going to do a little follow-up, see what's going on. Uh, and I know wrestling has been, uh, if anything, it's been more down than up. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to start off with, I know that Ken COVID has been, uh, really messing with people's lives out there. Everything okay with you guys over there? We're surviving. We, we're doing what we can, taking it one day at a time. That's all you I can do. Uh, personally, because I haven't personally been affected, you know, in my family and such. Have you been personally affected by what's going on? A couple of my family members have had it. Thankfully, it was very mild, and they're fine now, which is all that counts. Awesome. Very cool to hear. Uh, well, that's out of the way. So, Let's get to John with Miss Sparks. Uh, I do want to start this off with, I set up a little chat uh, because I wanted to make it easier, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And I actually, <laughs> whew, I accidentally called Miss Sparks, uh, Jackal Sparks. She Sorry, gave me the heat. Here. Yes, yes. Uh, please welcome. Uh, uh, Miss Sparks you know. gave me the heat. I, and, and I didn't mean to call you Jackal. That's on me. Uh, <laughs> Who, <laughs> who is your friend that we have right now? This is Ivy. Oh, wow. She's a Chowini. A, a Chowini. <laughs> a a Chowini, huh? Yeah. Could you please explain what a Chowini is to us, please? She is part Chihuahua, part Weenie dog. Well, uh, I have never seen a Chowini. This is a this is a first me. Is that the first Chawini you've ever seen? And I mean, obviously, <laughs> I didn't want her. She kind of fell into my lap. My mom called me one day and she's like, "Hey, come over." And I was like, "Okay, sure." Go to the house and she's like, "Oh, you want to see this dog?" And I was like, "Well, duh. Like, who do you think I am? Of course, I want to see the dog." So she brings her out and she's like, "Yeah, I picked her up, but I can't keep her." So. uh do you think you can take her home? And I was like, yeah, let me call. Let me call my boyfriend. Call him up. And he's like, yeah, it's the landlord. Landlord didn't answer. But I was like, yeah, he said it was fine. <laughs> and now we got this one. Uh, what's uh, I, 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 Ivy, how old is Ivy right now? She's about three or four. We're not 100% positive how old she was when we got her. So, But she still she still acts like a puppy. She still moves like a puppy. She still hogs all the attention like a puppy. You know, I would think so, but she's very quiet. And usually the smaller breed dogs aren't very quiet. She's quiet right now because I'm petting her. Oh, I got you. She's getting the loving, so it's all yeah. good. <laughs> you want to make uh, an appearance? <laughs> uh, now, I've spoken to other uh, couples uh, that are both wrestlers. And I know that you have your better half is also in wrestling. And I don't know if I threw this at you because I'm not that bright, but I'd like to kind of, if I did, I apologize. But if I did it, this will be a good one because I have found 
when there's animals involved in the couples that are both in wrestling, I found that they utilize their pets maybe sometimes in their, uh, <laughs> in their gimmicks, if you will, uh, while they're messing around. Uh, is Ivy ever incorporated to what's ever going on in the house? Ivy incorporates herself. <laughs> if, I, if I even touch my boyfriend and she unapproves, here she comes nudging her head in between or like we'll be play fighting or wrestling, whatever. She starts barking, trying to bite me. She's like, how dare you? How dare you touch my dad? <laughs> well, Ivy, you have a, a the cutest little face of a, of a, a Chawini, is that correct again? Chawini, uh, you are. Fix your lip. You know, you're to me. Fix your lip. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I was going to say you look a little sideways, but I didn't want to insult nobody. Uh, She's got an underbite. You, you are the cutest little Chawini I've ever seen. I've never seen one, but you are the cutest one ever. Uh, <laughs> Where are you going? Hey, camera hog. We, we're all camera hogs. Why do you think I do this? I mean, for real. <laughs> I can't believe you just said. I'm my interview. Uh, oh, can you so tell us back up? <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. This is fan These are the things that you'll never get if you're at a show and you're trying to get a little quick word with the uh, talent. Uh, at the shows, you'd never get this. So this is fantastic. I love this stuff. Miss <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sparks, I know we talked uh, previously, and you have described uh, that beautiful championship. But uh, I'd like to introduce again, uh, Miss Jacqueline Sparks. You have that beautiful belt. Please describe the belt. Uh, who, who uh, what company it's from? And don't give us the four little letters because sometimes we just don't know what's going on with the four little letters. Mm. Okay, so this is made from. No, I know it's silver. Who made the belt? Pro Am. Thank you. This is made from Pro Am. It's silver. It's you can see it's very very thick. Very. Ooh, it's thick. one. It's not one of those like one of those Walmart belt looking belts because uh -huh. I've seen some of those. That thing is solid. This is heavy. It's about eight pounds. Eight pounds. It likes to fall off me. It needs a little makeover, but it's beautiful as it is. We got the side plates here, nice American flag, everything, Canada, England. Very nice. So that is the championship for which company, my friend? RICW, and I am the universal champion, the highest of highest. Wow. So you, uh, male or female that's in the company, you are... It's a big dog, if exactly. you will. Exactly. Exactly. Really, of the company. And, and I know we've spoken about this before, but I mean, for a smaller stature female, as a heavyweight champion, if you will, well, the universal, that's, I, I don't mean, <laughs> I don't mean to degrade you, uh, a universal champion, uh, it's got to be tough to stay on the top of that mountain. And I know that we haven't been very active lately, but you don't get this when you're not uh, pre when it's pre COVID when, you know, and I, and I know it's been on a downturn, but gaining that championship and keeping it is two different things. Mm -hmm. Could you please describe to us how difficult it is for a, a lady in the industry to keep such a belt? So I wasn't trained like a female wrestler, so to speak. You kind of get these, these wrestlers who go in, and they train a couple times and they learn how to take the bumps and they learn how to do what you got to do to get by as a wrestler. I was trained. I'm going to beat the shit out of you. You're going to learn how to take hits. You're going to learn how to give hits. And then we go from there. And I, I was trained by Chris Dozer and he did not take, take it lightly. There was many a times I'd come home crying. Didn't know if I wanted to do it. Didn't know if I was good enough to do it, but he kept pushing me. And as he pushed, he also said, this is what you're doing right. This is what you're doing wrong. This is what you need to work on. Sometimes he'd videotape me and be like, look how you're doing this. This is, that's not, that's not how you do it. How do we fix this? And it, it's, it's not weird, but I'm the ultimate underdog because not only am I tiny, I'm a female. I'm overlooked. I'm in a male dominant industry not only industry but RACW is mostly I'm, I'm the only female I'm the okay. only like 
mainstay female. And it, it took a lot. It took a lot for me to get where I am today. And quite honestly, I wish there was more intergender wrestling. I don't even consider it intergender because it's just wrestling to me. I've heard that from both sides. Some say it's intergender. Uh, some say it's like wrestling is wrestling, wrestling, female or male across from me. There's really no label, if you yes. will. Once I get in that ring, I'm I'm a wrestler. I'm not a female. I'm not a male. I am Jacqueline Sparks. Like I, mm -hmm. it, it's it's hard because you have the males who look at me and be like, I don't want to face her, or I don't I don't want to hurt her. More specifically, mm -hmm. people think that because I'm small. I'm fragile and I'm not like I've been put through tables. I've been made to bleed. I've taken chair shots. I've taken, I've been through ringers. I was, like I said, I was trained as a wrestler and it's almost like disrespectful for somebody to turn around and be like, Hey, I don't want to hurt her. And I'm like, well, that's fine because I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> I just wanted to touch on something. Uh, the tables, the chair shots, uh, the bleeding, uh, better you than me. Uh, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, better you than me. Uh, and I must say, you you say this with much confidence, uh, being the champion of, you can come at me all you want, but you want to know something, I'm coming right back at you. Mm -hmm. I don't care what your perception of me is from the outside, looking in, if you will. Exactly. Uh, but I'm coming at you just as hard as you're telling me that you're coming at me. So I feel that confidence coming from the champ, yes. uh, Miss Sparks. And I appreciate that because it, without that confidence, you don't have that championship mentality. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I actually have a picture here. This was from, let me see if I can get it so you can see it. This was from uh, War Games. Oh, uh, I, I, I see as they say, some color, if yes. you will. Yes, a little. Well, it's Faction Wars. I'm sorry. Not War Games. No cease and desist, please. Um, <laughs> but we had Faction Wars, and that was my first real hardcore match. Like, we had had a little bit of... I had a um, Money in the Bank type of match. Ladder. Mm -hmm. Briefcase. We did that, which was my first, like, little taste. Like, we didn't do anything too crazy, but, there, you know, there was a ladder involved. There was there was a, those big moments of getting pushed off the ladder or getting pushed onto the ropes, taking the risks. But Faction Wars was five on five. No rules, weapons legal after the last person's in, elimination-style match, and it was the biggest match of my career to date. Well, besides for winning the championship, obviously. But that that was, like, a very detrimental point in my career and it was the most fun I've ever had. <laughs> like, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, uh, spooky. <laughs> that's, that, that's kind of spooky, but again, you're in it to win it. And, and, and that, that's what really counts because if you get in there and you hesitate or you're second guessing yourself, uh, there's, thing. there's liability to your body. There's liability to your, your opponent's bodies. And such, so there's that safety factor. Uh, but then on the other part, the visual end of it, when it comes to the fan part, it doesn't look that great if you don't have that <laughs> if you don't have that confidence and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing in that ring. So I mean, not all fans see it, but when it's seen, it just doesn't look that great. So yes. I really appreciate again, I appreciate the professionalism. That word professionalism has to be stuck right there. Uh, because look at you, man, you're, you're, <laughs> you're in the middle of a war, literally you're in the middle of a war. Uh, so I, I applaud you for sticking, sticking it out. <laughs> Not this kid. Hell no. <laughs> it's fun. It's a good time when you got the passion for the business and you got yes. the love for what is wrestling. It like, trust me, there was, there was times where I stopped and I was like, do I really want to do this? Is this what I want to do? Am I cut out for this? Should I just valet? Should I just manage? Like, what should I do? And then you have somebody who believes in you as I did with the core group of people who helped me break out. And you, they never let you second guess yourself. And of course you always have the option of, you know where the door is. If that's where you want to go, go. If you're not going to give a hundred percent and I gave it nothing but a hundred percent. I gave it 110%. Like I said, there was times where I could barely walk in the morning after a night of training. 
or after a show. And it was just one of those things that like you sit there and you say, do I want to do this? And then like you'll watch back your matches because that's what wrestlers do. I watch my matches constantly, even in quarantine right now. That's how I'm getting better. I watch what I do. And then I say, okay, I could have done that a little bit differently. Or I really liked what I did here. I'm going to keep that. And you take that and you learn from it. And you see that, oh, my God, I got that big crowd reaction that I wanted. I didn't even hear that when I was in the ring. And that's, like, one of the craziest things to me because when I won the championship, I didn't register what was going on. I was in the moment of this is mine. I'm going to take it. I'm going to run with it. And I had watched back footage from Mashup Wrestling. He had posted something on Twitter. And I got the alert for it. And it was uh, Jacqueline Sparks just defeated Chris Dozer. Uh, becoming the first female universal champion in RACW. And I watched it back and I heard the crowd and I heard how much they gave me that. Oh my God, I can't believe watching people's faces. And I cried because like, you don't realize how much people actually like you until you watch your matches back and you're like, I'm doing something right. Okay. All right. And we really like to, to, to boo, uh, thro throw the heat to Mr. Yeah. Gozer. So I'm sure, and, and I wasn't there personally, but I am sure uh, <laughs> that the crowd was loving every second of it from when they, when the referee counted three. So looking back at it, and I've talked to many wrestlers that say the same exact thing. Yes, they hear us, but not every single moment, not every move that we see that you guys, you know, you've done the movements, but you're not getting, you're not registering the reactions that yes. we're giving you. You hear the crowd, you hear the boos, you hear the cheers. But like it doesn't fully sink in because you're so in that moment of okay, I have to do this. This is how this is how this has got to go. We got to make sure we play this off right, whatever the case may be. And you make sure in that moment, as that character, you are playing to your fullest extent. And then, like once you like for me, I I victory rolled Dozer. So when I was going through that victory roll in my head, it's holy crap, this is actually happening. Oh my god, this is really happening. One, two, three, and I wasn't even off dozer before I started crying. And everybody's like, why are you crying? I'm like, because you, you don't know how long I've waited for this. You don't know how much effort I put in to get here. And of course you get the fake, well, congratulations, you deserve it. Like, no, you didn't see anything I went through. You don't know the process of what got me here. It's not just a, oh, good job, high five. Like, no, it was a, I worked my ass off. And if you work your ass off, maybe you can do this too, but not right now. Like, this is my time to shine. We've spoken Mr. Dozer a few times. It's funny you speak of him because this coming Monday, in a couple of days, Mr. Dozer's making his return. Yeah. Uh, so I hope he doesn't listen back, which I know he's going to, but he just heard that we love to boo him. I don't know where that's going to go on our interview. Uh, so we'll see what, what happens on Monday. Yes, he's a very <laughs> booable person. <laughs> He's also uh, a fantastic person, though. <laughs> for an ultra quick second, I'm just going to disappear real quick. All right, bye. See you later. And I'm right back. See, ultra quick <laughs> second. I just had to do something real quickly. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Dozer reached out almost immediately as well, if I'm not mistaken. So I appreciate when I put up a stats because I don't mind at all reaching out to individuals and saying, hey, what's going on? You know, would you mind sitting down? I don't mind doing that. A thousand times over. Looks but like if I, I can just put up, oh, that's right. It, did, it didn't go in my face. That's quite oh, okay, right. good. Um, <laughs> uh, so when I put up a quick little status and people actually reach out, it warms me up a little bit. So I appreciate everybody that actually put yeah. something on. We like yeah. you, believe it or not. <laughs> and, yeah, no, it's very surprising. That's why, you know, it does, it does touch me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> now, if I'm not mistaken, I'd like to dive into a little something, something here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, not, it's not just the RICW, but it's the Chop Shop 2 yes. as a unit, as a whole, as an environment, yes. as a family, if you will. Yes. That is all kind of – it's not there anymore. It's an empty building, and I've kind of seen the process on the face page. I was following the posts and whatnot. Uh, could you please talk us through uh, what that does for Miss Sparks? And I know – it, there's a there's many promotions, and I've spoken about the Chop Shop many a times, that reside in the Chop Shop. But I'd like to get your perspective because you're actually the first person that I'm talking to from the area um, and that has been in the RICW specifically, but within the Chop Shop. And now that it's gone. 
Could you please talk to us, uh, the fans, and maybe even your peers? How does that affect somebody that was bred in the chop shop, if you will? It's it's not the first time we've gone through something like this. We lost the chop shop one um, before we got the chop shop two. Obviously, there was two of them, but it, it's. It hurts. No matter what, it hurts. That's a home. That's where Jacqueline Sparks started off in the original Chop Shop. But for me to have any as many accolades as I did in the Chop Shop too, that will always be home to me. And it's not that we can't find another home because I'm sure we will once COVID is over. It, it's it's not a goodbye. It's a I'll see you in a little bit type of thing. And it hurts, like I said, of course. And it's weird seeing the building empty. And it's weird, actually. Today, I just got, uh, my boyfriend got a notification on his phone that RACW was supposed to start at 4 o'clock today. And we're oh, like, no kidding. Yeah, no, it's not. How did that go? Yeah, how, how did that go? Did you, was it busy? Oh, super busy. We did so much today. Like, yeah, I <laughs> defended my title against the broom. It was great. <laughs> then it hurts. I mean, I don't have a place to go and get out the frustrations of life anymore. And that's what it is for a lot of people. And I'm sure a lot of wrestlers tell you the same it's it's an outlet it's a place for me to go and punch people in the face and not get arrested for it like it's one of those things that like that's your therapy that's your outlet and especially for somebody like myself and i'm sure many other wrestlers who who suffer from anxiety or depression or you know life itself it, it was always that one place that i could not be in my headspace so much and just worry about what jacqueline had to do and it's I mean, like I said, well, we we build from these things. We don't let them bury us. We build, and we find something better, and we get something with heat and AC, and we hope to God <laughs> it's not black walls on the third floor. Like that's what we do. Wait, did you say heat and AC? Yeah, AC. Yeah. Is nice. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> happy with just heat. Quite honestly, we watch I watch a lot of AEW, and like we see the uh, you see like them with the dome open and they're coming out with their sweatshirts on and like they're off wrestling a little bit because they're cold and I'm like y'all have never wrestled in a mill huh <laughs> you've never had that opportunity I've wrestled in 30 degree weathers and short shorts and a freaking sports bra like what <laughs> so, <laughs> with the building being empty excuse me obviously there's no ring there now yeah. when there weren't shows a lot of the personalities the talents would just go there to get ring time and hone their craft. What is Miss Jacqueline Sparks doing? Or does she even have the opportunity to get in a ring with everything the way it is right now? I've done very little, quite honestly. Like, all, all I've really been able to do, you know, is talk about wrestling and watch my wrestling. Like I had said, I watch a lot of my my playbacks and they'll pop up on my memories of one year ago you faced Jack Kruger or one year ago you faced Chris Dozer and it's great to relive those memories it'd be a lot better to be in the ring but right. like I, you kind of got to go like with the flow of things right now and it's it's hard it sucks because I would I've killed to be in a ring right now but it, it's not it's, it's out of our control and like it's just shitty quite honestly like there's no other way to put it I feel like I feel like a uh like a dog without a bone. Like I had something and now it's gone. <laughs> and like, it's not even just the chop shop in general, it's COVID. We, I went out and I actually managed Chaz Marinelli for uh, uh, NWWE in, oh. uh, in Socket. Yeah. Fogman was there. I said, hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that was the closest I've gotten to a ring. And that was the last time I was next to a ring. And I only managed, but it was still good to have that environment again. It was still good to see the fans and to say hi to people and just be Jacqueline Sparks for a little while. Like, we all have our outlets and wrestling was mine. And it's just, eh. <laughs> being, being in a locker room after not being in the locker room for a little bit, uh, isn't that something that it's just like, oh, man, this is cool shit, man, right? And it's good to see familiar faces. I mean, uh, Vinny Abruzzi was there. Ref Jeremy Bell was there. Like, it was it was great to have those people who made home home there, yeah. too. Like, even though we're not home, we can still bullshit and whatever right. the case may be backstage. And, like, it was cool, too, because um, your friend uh, Ryan, Ryan was there. Ryan Frost. He was there. Uh, Frost, you suck. <laughs> he was there. Um, 
uh, King Leon the Sixth was there. Like, and it was cool to meet Tommy Dreamer too. Not too long, just a little, just a little. Hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. He had very soft hands, which I was oh, very nice. surprised about. I did not expect Tommy Dreamer to have soft hands, but <laughs> lo and behold, <laughs> it's cool. It's nice. It, it's it's that environment that I miss the most. Like, even like I had only been to a handful of WWE shows. Like, we had gone to two NXTs. And, like, just that environment of, like, have you been to a WWE live show? I have. So you know, like, that what I'm, that, like. Oh, yeah. You can cut the air with the knife because everybody's, like, just so ready and, like, oh, my God, okay. <laughs> and the music starts and you're, like, oh, God, here we go. Like, and it, it's, yeah. it's that environment that I miss the most. It's the fans that I miss. It's the, not even the Yego Jacqueline Sparks. It's just that environment. It's that home feel because, like it's not there right now like it's it's crazy and it sucks and i don't know how else to describe it <laughs> like, it's a shitty situation uh now i'd like to kind of jump back you were talking mr abruzzi yes he was at that event he, he was. was defending he was defending his open championship and uh unfortunately things didn't go uh the fans way or mr abruzzi's way yeah. we now have a new champion of one Sammy Diaz, which I'm not very fond of, let's be all honest. I mean, he knows it. He's not fond of me. We all know that. Uh, <laughs> as, as you're there, and I know you're there as a personality, but as you're there and you see something like from the back, if you will, and do you watch the matches by, by chance, though, when you're at the shows? I try to. It's usually a very congested area because, you know, you have all production and everything else. But I, I try to watch what I can or even just kind of sneak out a little bit and get a peek. Now, were, were you happy? Uh, were, did you happen to catch Mr. Abruzzi's match as this was going down? I did not. I saw bits and pieces of it. I had spoke to him after the fact, but I, I did not witness it, unfortunately. Like, and it's hard, too, because you always cheer for your guys. Vinny's one of yeah. our guys. He's an RICW guy. And like, standing there like, yeah, go get him. And then he loses. And like, oh, okay. <laughs> Good job. I talked so much shit to Sammy Diaz leading up to that event. I felt like a jackass, but that's the way they like to make me feel. So it is what it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so much fun, really. Uh, wrestling is tons of fun. And I know exactly what you're talking about, about the environment. Um, and even though that we're on the other side of the guardrail, it's ex like you're saying, when you go to a WWE live event, I mean, I know it's not that big of a buildup when you go to some of these indie shows, but for some of us, Miss Sparks, for some of us, it's, <laughs> it's still damn real. And we love, <laughs> and we love the environment when we go to these uh, indie shows. So, it's similar, and I know it's very different, but it's always so very similar. Mm -hmm. It's the environment. It's it's what it's what the show makes it. At RECW, we, we like to really build those storylines, and we really like to tell stories, and that's what's important in wrestling. Is you can you can go to a show and you can watch random matches that are put together, and yeah, you you might enjoy it. you might enjoy the wrestling, but when you have that story, like for example, me versus Dozer, best friends, same faction. He turns around and says, I want you to face me for the title. And I say, are you sure? Like, is this what you want to do? And I do it. And I beat him. Mm -hmm. It was it was a payoff, like, not only just for me, but for the fans. It was that, oh, my God, somebody finally beat Chris Dozer. And it was somebody who nobody expected to. I don't even think Chris Dozer expected me to beat him. <laughs> you you got to outsmart the guy every so often. He, he's <laughs> brute and he's smart. But he's got to remember, he trained me. He He gave me everything I knew. And for him to like to lose the title to me, it was mind blowing. And like I said, I'm sure not just for me, but for the fans. Like watching back, seeing people's reactions of, oh my, oh my god. And then they stand up from their chair and they're watching. They're like, did that really just happen? It's crazy. And like, it, it's such a great story in general. Like, like I said, we always try to do the stories and make sure it makes sense for everything going on. And, like, I feel that some places don't do that. And I'm not saying they don't have storylines or they don't have buildups to what's going to happen. But we like to plant the seeds in the places that nobody expects us to plant the seeds. Or it'll just be one word 
in a promo and nobody sees it coming and they're like, oh, that's what they meant by that. And it's it's the things like that that make the show what it is, that makes RACW different than everybody else. Because not only do we have female wrestlers winning main championships, we have the stories that back behind it. And like I said, storytelling in wrestling is one of the most important things you can do along with psychology because you have to make everything make sense. And if it doesn't make sense, it's not going to make sense to the fans. And if the fans don't understand what's happening, what is the point? <laughs> we got Miss Sparks all jacked up over there. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, let, let me go back a little bit. You were talking about watching your matches uh, because if you don't watch them, you can't find the mistakes. Yes. Be because you can't, you can't always be surrounded by your friends and them saying, that was awesome. That was fantastic. You did the best. You were awesome. And, and all of that comes with that. Yeah. You have to take the good with the bad with any art that's going on out there. I, I, I'm, I'm an ex-musician. I <laughs> Let me tell you, you got to take the good with the bad. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so let me go back to when you're watching your matches. Do you watch specific for the psychology? Are you watching for your moveset? When you're looking at a guy like Mr. Dozier and you're going against him, are you looking at, I shouldn't have, you know, like, I shouldn't have done this because he's so much bigger than me. I should have done this instead. Um, so are you looking at those kind of things? And uh, uh, more to that, when you get that big pop, that should answer the question of, we told that damn story correctly. Oh, absolutely. I, I When I watch my matches, I, I kind of, try to pay attention to everything, my moveset, the psychology, everything else. Like I've watched matches where the chemistry was just off, where um, like it wasn't a bad match and it told the story it needed to tell, but one person was always a beat behind the other or in front of the other, which happens. There's some people in wrestling that you just don't have psychology with and that's nothing you have control over. But like like you were saying with Dozer, if you if we go back and we watch my match with him against Winter Warfare, if it ever gets put on, on YouTube, which I'm sure it will eventually, but <laughs> you watch that match and you see the way that we do things, and there was there was one one point where uh, I went for one move, he blocked it, went for his move, I blocked it. Now, mind you, he trained me. I know he knows everything I'm gonna throw at him and vice versa. I, I threw the punch once connected. He threw the punch once connected and we punched each other, double punch. And that was, that was the down. We were both out for a little while after that. And we knew like me going into that, I knew I cannot punch Chris Dozer and knock him out. I can get him down, <laughs> but he's not going to stay down. Yeah. So I have to make sure for one, he's not going to get a chance to hit that Dozer driver and get me out. He's not going to get the chance to hit the punch. And I need to make sure I'm doing everything in my, my possibility and my move set to outsmart him because I had to be one step ahead of Dozer, which was very hard for me. Like I said, we both knew each other so well. And there were some sequences where you're going, oh, okay. Oh, who? Uh, okay. All right. And then one of us would get the move over and they'd be like, oh shit. Okay. All right. So that, okay. And like, it was a very back and forth match. And honestly, I wouldn't have that match any other way. That was one of my favorite matches that I've had thus far. And like, it, it's, it's cool to look back on it because like I said, you see the fan reactions, you see, the people and you see two people in the ring that genuinely care about each other and care about the well-being of each other in that match because it's you gotta you gotta look out not only for yourself but the person you're put against like you said when when somebody second guesses something or you don't trust the person across from you the fans read it the fans oh, read yeah. it and like I had faced Dozer the very first time a couple of years ago now I was terrified it was my first real match back. It was supposed to be against Nick Marshawn, but he decided not to show up that that night because that was supposed to finish mine and his storyline. Well, he was my boyfriend. He wasn't nice to me. I turned on him. I said, fuck you. I ain't doing this no more. And we were supposed to face each other so we could finally settle this out. But he decided not to show up. I wasn't good enough for him, but that was fine. I got him back eventually. <laughs> so I ended up facing Dozer the week after, and I was terrified. I mean, like shaking. I was unsure of every move that I made. It was to the point of, I didn't kick out of a spine buster. When's the last time you're gonna see somebody kick out of a spine buster? And that was because I was so scared of what I was gonna do next and how I was gonna do it. And we finished the match 
And I cried because I knew I could do way better than that. And he knew I could do better than that. And he kept trying me and he kept pushing me and getting me further and further and further. And like one thing I can say about Dozer, like he's my best friend. Like altogether, he is my best friend. And when he, when we were trying to figure out finishes for me, I do a real flashy crucifix bomb, which is a crucifix into a code red. It's sick. I love it. But I can't hit everybody with that. How am I supposed to hit? a guy that's three times my size with a crucifix bomb, he's going to squish me. It's not going to work. <laughs> and he said to me, why don't, why don't you do the punch? I was like, really? You, you want, you want to pass the punch down to me? And he was wow. like, yeah. and like that, that meant something that meant he had the faith in me. That meant that we were, we were a team. We were a cohesive unit at that point, even, even without, with salvation or without salvation. It was, it's one of those things of I'll always have your back. And like, I'll never not use the punch now. Like 30 years from now when Dozer's not wrestling and I'm on AEW, I'm still going <laughs> to use the punch and I'm still not going to pull it. And I'm still going to punch you right in the face. <laughs> now you spoke of something earlier about uh, chairs, tables and such. Yeah. I want, uh, that's something I want to revert back to because uh, are you familiar with Dirtbag Dan at all? I've seen your post about him. I haven't watched too much of his stuff, but I know who the man is. <laughs> he's off his fucking rocker, okay? He he's a lunatic, aren't we and all? He's right also now? yeah, <laughs> uh, and he's very filthy. Uh, does not believe in soap. Uh, but the only reason why I, br I the only reason why I bring him up is because uh, he's a hardcore style kind of guy when it comes to the wrestling. It's not that he can't that he does not or can't. I've seen him in many traditional matches, but he prefers to get uh, nitty gritty, bloody, cut up, and, and and crazy. Now you mentioned about uh, the hardcore style type match. Uh, now having a first match, it has to really uh, set you off uh, in your brain, uh, like your very first match. That's really got to mess with your head. But can you tell us? Uh, does it compare? Maybe some the, the the same kind of feelings from when you have your very first match to when you walk into an environment and you know it's gonna hurt like an MF. -er. This is gonna be something totally different in a hardcore style match. Are you as nervous? Is there a different feel to something like that? It's a different kind of nervous. I'll be one hundred percent with you. Before faction wars, I was terrified. I was scared. So I, I didn't know how my body was gonna react. Am I gonna shut down? Am I going to freak out? What's going to happen? And it was, there was this moment when we were walking out because we came through the crowd and I had an ATM sign and I took the ATM sign and I slammed it on the floor. And as soon as I did that, I was like, all right, I'm ready. Well, let's do this. I'm ready. Like, I'm good. And like, it was, it was, it was weird because once I did that, it was like, it was zone. It was go time. And it was one of those things that like, I will never get that feeling again like that. It's like chasing the high. You're chasing the dragon every time you get in that ring and then trying to get that big pop and you're trying to get that feeling back. But I can tell you with 100% certainty, two of the feelings that I will never feel again is when I won the championship and when I entered Faction Wars. Because I knew, we knew, it was a year and a half storyline. It was this thing that we were building and building and building and building that we finally got to pay off. And afterwards, trust me, I felt it. We all did. <laughs> I don't think I was concussed, but I was definitely like on the ride home. I like stopped and I looked because I was actually with Dozer and I looked at Dozer and I said, I don't feel so good. And he's like, well, what's wrong? Tell me what's going on. I'm like, I feel very nauseous, a little bit like I'm going to throw up. He looked at me. He's like, it's the adrenaline wearing off. You'll be OK. Eat. <laughs> I'm like, oh, OK. That's how this works. All right, cool. <laughs> It was very helpful too for having so many, so like vets in the in the business in that match because you got to think we had Cipriano Abruzzi, we had Vinny Abruzzi, we had Dozer, we had Chaz Marinelli, even so much to say like you know um, Little Daddy Bravo. He's not he's not a vet as much as the other guys are, but he knows his way around a hardcore match, and I feel very safe when I'm in the ring with him. As much as I hate his guts, but that's the <laughs> point with everybody, especially Chris Pyro. Chris Pyro and Dozer had gone to war how many times before that? And neither one of them died. So I knew everything was going to be okay in the end. Right. But it, it was, it's, it's that sense of, okay, we go in here, we kick ass, but we got to make sure we're all protected. And at any point, if any of us like,
saw, like Kruger, for example. At one point, Chaz Marinelli's beating up on me. He's getting he's getting me good. He's beating the crap out of me. I'm on the ground. All of a sudden, I look up, and I see Kruger running with a freaking night flail. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> thanks. Like, and, and it's the environment. It's definitely like, like, like I was saying, you have to trust your opponent. You have to trust the process in general. So, like, with, especially with hardcore matchups, you're not in there with somebody you feel is going to be in your best interest and keep you safe and you go home to your family when this is done. It's not going to turn out well. And it's probably going to turn into a shoot and nobody wants that to happen. Like, but I know, like I said, I knew what I was walking into. I knew who I was walking in there with and I knew I was safe. And it was the coolest feeling in the whole entire world because you're like, holy shit, we're doing this. And, like, it was, it was funny, too, because we actually had about seven people in the crowd when we did that match. Year and a half payoff, seven people in the crowd, 10 people faction wars. And we're like, okay, all right, we're going to do this. We got to do this. Like, and of course, like as a, as a wrestler, when you look out and you see the crowd and you see there's not that many people and there's not that many, it kind of like deflates you a little bit. And then you're like, nah, we're going to give these people a hell of a show. Like it doesn't matter how many people are in that crowd. And we had people who were at different shows watching live streams being like, oh, we wish we were there. That's awesome. Like, I can't believe I'm missing this. Mm-hmm. And, like, RCW has always been kind of like the black sheep of the chop shop. And we've always been the, like, non-spoken of sister company. And I don't understand that. I We've put out, like, a couple of years ago, were we the best that we could be? Absolutely not. But from where we were to where we are now, we have Mike Montero. We have Detox. We have Chris Dozer. We have Chaz Marinelli. We have freaking Jacqueline Sparks. Like, <laughs> we have a roster that could go against anybody. And we have a very diverse roster, like even Cold Cash and, you know, the Baker brothers. David pops in every so often. Like, we have an environment that I just don't understand where people are like, oh, well, it's just RICW. Like, no, it's not just RICW. It's not, that's not what this is about. Like, we've always been super supportive and done what we can to help wrestling around. Like, even not even just in the chop shop. But it's one of those things that where, like, I, you, you see the product or you don't even watch the product and just like, nah, not into them. You, you can't judge a company or even a person like myself. If you go back to 2016 Jacqueline Sparks, mm-hmm. don't. Just don't. Just don't do that to yourself. Same with 2016 RACW. But here, four years later in 2020 or 2019, since I was the last time we wrestled, <laughs> <laughs> we're a completely different brand of wrestling. We, we do the storylines. We, we do what you need to do to get over as a major wrestling company. Well, major independent however you want you know what i'm trying to say (laughs) we did the time we we built it we got rid of the riffraff we we did what we had to do we made people believe in themselves and believe in the product where i'm sure if you talked to mike montero four years ago he wouldn't have stepped foot in RACW. where now he loves it and he's one of our champions like that's it's the thing of you can't judge somebody or a company from where they were years ago because we're not the same you, and you if know, people it, haven't seen oh, it, you need to. No, go ahead. Like, if people haven't been watching, you need to start. Like, we're doing some major things here, and it sucks because we get that kind of like undertone. And, and you can find RICW on YouTube and such, right? Yes, RICW tapings um, is okay. So if you type in RICW tapings on YouTube, it is one hundred percent going to try to change it to rice gum, but don't do that. <laughs> Auto check, uh, auto correct. <laughs> it's the worst, and I'm like, no, I don't want to see people making rice. Like I'm trying to watch <laughs> So now, so now you get like a thousand, a thousand videos on YouTube of, of, about rice. It's terrible. I'm like, like, listen, I enjoy watching Uncle Roger. He's funny as hell. Like, no, that's the extent of it. So I, I kind of want to touch upon the uh, what you were just speaking of about. Uh, pre-2019 uh promotion if you will because i've gone to a promotion a couple times and i've done uh gone to their seminars just so i can hang out um and and take in the environment and and they've always let me which is uh i i can never thank them enough for just allowing 
a fan to come in with his phone, hang out, keep his mouth fucking shut, and just watch and do a little filming, yeah. and then take those matches, and I was sharing them privately on YouTube with the guys so they could see them, like you're saying, they want to yeah. see the material. Yes. Well, I want to touch upon uh, the pre, the 2019 to the 2016, because I'm going through some of my, my channel about, I want to say, approximately six months ago, when, when the last time we spoke, and I wanted to share some year old stuff at a seminar with some of these guys and they were like Kincaid if you share that shit the next time I see you I'm gonna fucking strangle you I don't want to see that bullshit (laughs) because of the evolution of where that specific worker is or that specific worker is at this point in their career they didn't want to look back and see that skinny little kid or what have you you know what I'm saying Yep. It, it's it's funny because, like, I know personally from being in the talks of, you know, with, with Dozer and everybody, a lot of people will say they will not watch their first year of wrestling. They won't because not only are they not that person anymore, but we're all god awful in our first year of wrestling. We're still trying to find ourselves. We're trying to find our character. And, like, I watch back and it's the, it kicks me right in the imaginary balls that I don't have. <laughs> because we'll go back on YouTube and, you know, we're subscribed to RACW and everything. And the first one that pops up with a 1.5K views is a triple threat between me, Mary Dawes, and Isana. <laughs> and this match, Liz tried all she could. I was, I was still new. I was like six months into the business. Yep. Mary Dawes was Mary Dawes. And there... I don't know why people watch this. I think it, it they like the torture or something. Because <laughs> literally, like, we've watched, like, we've been drinking, for example. Like, we'll, we'll start drinking. And we'll be like, oh, let's watch wrestling. Yeah, that sounds great. And somebody will click on it. And I'm like, why? <laughs> like, I can't. Like, I like to go back and watch, like, a year ago. Like, when I can. Because I took time after the whole Jacqueline Sparks 2016. I took time off until 2018. I had a match between Hunter Kane. Well, it was me and Hunter Kane because we were still part of the Anarchist Empire at that point. That was right after I broke up the Empire. And Dozer and Chaz Marinelli. Wait, so Hunter Kane and Jacqueline Sparks were in a <laughs> faction or a tag team or something? Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? We broke up the Empire. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't mean to interrupt, but the visual was just killing me. It's great. I love it. Like, you'll see pictures, like, from when the Empire was together. And because me and, me and Wes did a lot of mixed, uh, me and Hunter, sorry, did a lot of uh, mixed tags to begin with. And because I was still super new, and he was, like, the, Hunter Kane was the hired hand to kind of protect the Empire. And he protected me the most because I was the one that needed the most protecting. And, like, you'll see, like, me and then Hunter. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's so funny. But that, so that was the last match that we had. And after the match, Dozer was just coming back to help train and everything else. And he looked at me after that match and he went, You need you need time. You need to you need to stop being in the ring and you need to learn the craft a little more. Mm-hmm. Did it suck? Yeah, sure. But we were we were going in a different direction anyway. So I'm like, all right, I can valet. I can still be involved. I can do ring announcing, whatever needs help backstage. And I took that year off. I trained for a year straight. And like I said, my first match back was a great no. It was against it was against Dozer, and we had a little mishap. And I was nervous as hell. Of course I was. I had I'd been out of the ring for a year, and like I had done like a little. I tagged with T Phoenix against uh, Zach Fantastic and Jason Devine at a campground show. And it was fun. And everybody was like, wow, you've really improved in the last year. You're doing a lot better than what you were. Blah, blah, blah. Good job. And then when I came back after facing Dozer and I started to get my ground and I started to get my bearings, they kind of stopped and they were like, oh, you're, you're really taking off. You're really, you're really starting <laughs> to, you're really starting to do something here, Tiff. And like during, like I was saying how we were in the, I was in that ladder match. It was me, Rick and Chaz Marinelli, Billy Ware. And I had given 
Ricky Medeiros a balls plex off of the ladder. And <laughs> Mike Montero and Jason Devine were on the outside. And all of a sudden, I hear Mike Montero go, she's doing shit I ain't never seen her do before. And I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) cool when people notice your progress. Because, like, I notice my progress. Dozer notices my progress. But does anybody else? And then, like, you get that that confirmation of, okay, I'm doing something great. I got to keep going in this direction. Yeah, because, I mean, we don't – as long as, you know, your trainer is satisfied with your performance – you you do question yourself, and and I know you do want to uh, you do want to make your trainer proud. But when you hear a peer on the side saying stuff like that, that's that little validation, and it just gives you, no pun intended, gives you that little spark. If you a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a good feeling. Like I'm very not very. I'm one of a very few who have actually passed Dozer's training. Just like I said, Dozer does not go easy on you. And out of my out of my core group who I trained with, I'm the only one left. And it's one of those things that like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, I'm the I'm the I'm the protege. I'm I'm the little Chris Dozer, if you will. But people need to still see that I'm my own person. Like when when I faced somebody, I faced uh Chris Pyro a little while back and <laughs> I gave him a forearm. And like, you know, when you get them with a good one. And I remember he was in the corner and I hit him and he was like, you are trained by Dozer. And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, so things like that are just randomly said as you guys are that That's hilarious, man. That is hilarious. I've always wished that people like we could have little microphones on us so they can yes. hear the shit we talk while we're <laughs> wrestling each other. <laughs> Not all of it. Not, Not all. all of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good time. <laughs> oh man! Oh, great stuff. Uh, now, I, uh, uh, you were talking. The <laughs> the visual is kicking my ass. You were talking, uh, Mr. Hunter Kane and yourself as a tag team. Now, please, and and I'm sure that it. it I, I don't know if it's happened. That's why I'm questioning it. But because there's comical, uh, comical relief within. The entertainment value part of wrestling. Uh, please tell me there was a point when you guys were hanging out together as a tag team where Hunter came out first. They announced your name. You came out behind him and just stood there while everybody and your music is kicking ass. And you're like, what the hell? And you kind of peek around the corner of Hunter King. Was there anything like that as an entrance or anything like that? We, I did something similar with Little Daddy Bravo. I had managed okay. him and I believe it was RWA. And he came out first with the flag. And I spun around like underneath the flag, like, hey guys, I'm here. <laughs> with Hunter Kane, it was, uh, we actually had at one point, uh, Bobby Rossi was our general manager of RACW. And he did not like the Empire. He was not a part of the Empire. He wanted nothing to do with us because we didn't listen to anybody. We didn't care what you said. We were going to do what we wanted to do. And he had set up a match between me and Hunter Kane. Oh. And I'm trying to fight him. And he's like, no. And he's literally just holding my head and I'm swinging and I'm kicking. He's like, I'm not going to let you fight me. And I'm like, no, just let me, I can do it. Let me do it. <laughs> we, we have had those moments of, you know, calm. you got to, you got to. Yes. If wrestling was all serious, where's the fun in that? Like, yes. where's the fun? Like some of the, some of the backstage, like promos we've done and everything. Like I, I still, I'll look back and I'll laugh because like, one of my favorites was when uh, the brand, Jamie Tucker and Ke- uh, Chaz Marinelli, I almost said Ken Marinelli, where's that? <laughs> um, he, they had spiked Pumpalicious's drink, and uh, Eddie Vegas of Pumpalicious had failed the RACW wellness test. <laughs> and he, like, they, Eddie takes his, they, you see them, because you see them. And they put it in the drink and they shake it up and they put it down. And then Eddie comes out and he's like, oh, I'm thirsty. And he takes a sip and he's like, whoa, and he's going <laughs> off in his Eddie Vegas style. And like, it's little things like that. Like yes. that I love about wrestling, like the fact that we can look back and laugh at ourselves. And like, you see the things that we put out and the things that we do, like, yeah, we're all badasses. We all fight each other. We all want to kick each other's asses, but we can laugh too. Like we can have that moment. Yes. It, it- I feel <clears throat> personally, I feel it's not all about being jacked and killing people. 
without that other aspect of wrestling, there's something missing. And I feel if you can manage to bring both to the table with, you know, the violent part along with the comedic relief part and really make it and make it fun for us and yourselves at the same time, because it's not always about us. And I've noticed that the wrestlers say it's all about the fans. F that. It, yeah. it's, a, it's about both of us. It really is. Yes. No, I agree completely. I, um, right before lockdown, I had, it was right before I won the inner city belt. I had had a match with Vinny Abruzzi and we start off the match, you know, going back and forth and everything. I jump out of the ring and I start running and I run around the ring and I know Vinny's a fat ass. I know he can't keep up with me and I'm going <laughs> and I'm going and I'm going and I finally get back and he climbs in and he's like, you run so fast. I'm like, I know. And then I hit him with something. I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Interesting. Now that. That brings me to a very specific moment that I'd like to kind of discuss with you right now because you're having such a grand time, and this is what I love, Miss Sparks. This has been amazing. You've been laughing and telling great memories, and this has been just so much fun. But that story right there brings me to a, a, a story uh, maybe last year or the year before, PAPW. I'm going to say 2018. It was PAPW East Haven, and uh, – Buff Inc. happened to, to show up out of nowhere. And myself, I got attached to Buff Dad. I don't know what the hell happened. Me and him struck some kind of relationship. And whenever I seen him pop in at PAPW, I lost my ever-loving shit. Yep. Like, like every single top wrestler just walked through the door. And I was loving it. And my dad cracks up at me how much love I give him. And um, so they're, they're in the match. It's a tag team. And he starts doing, <laughs> whoo, this is grand. He starts doing this from one corner to another, doing the clothesline thing, running back yep. and forth. After the third clothesline, I start yelling, watch your pace. <laughs> Buff dad, watch <laughs> your pace. And that motherfucker slowed down little by little by little till he stopped in the middle of the ring and was totally out of gas. Yep. Miss Sparks, what a grand time. That one little spot I will remember forever and ever. Just so much fun. Look at Dick Lane. Dick Lane <laughs> is... <laughs> Look at Dick. Oh, my God. I can't. Oh, my God. Like for real. He is a fantastic wrestler. I whenever I'm in, in, in the ring with Dick, I know it's gonna be that sounds so wrong. Whenever I'm in the <laughs> ring with Lane, I know we're gonna have a good time. Like we I had faced him the last campground show. It was uh him, Tom, uh Tom Billington and Isana versus me and Detox. And I was living the life being a one night only member of detox we were happy <laughs> we did the and i was like yeah this is it this is how i go like i'm ready <laughs> and we had so much fun and like i i love the way that dick wrestles and doesn't take it too seriously and it's not that he's not serious about wrestling but his character is just over the top one time at RACW, he forgot his super suit now tell me how a man like dick lane forgets a super suit I don't know. I, I can't even answer that. I wouldn't even know how to start to answer that. So I was announcing, and he came out in jeans, like ripped jeans and a pair of sneakers. And I'm like, Dick Lane, what's going on, buddy? And he's like, <laughs> you know, Dick Lane, I forgot my super suit. And I'm like, how did you forget your super suit? And he's like, tonight, I'm just normal Dick Lane. So I announced him as normal Dick Lane. Like, I, what well, else? You did. I, I did. It's on, it's on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> I announced him as normal Dick Lane because what else was I supposed to do? Like, and it's uh, moments like that. Like, it, it's so much fun. When I faced Pumpalicious with uh, Deshaun, Hotshot Deshaun, it was me and Hotshot Des Deshaun. We were hot sparks. We faced him for Heart of uh, Pumpalicious for Heart of a Warrior. They refused to hit a girl. And there's one point in there that every time I watch it back, it makes me laugh so hard. I get in the ring and I go after Eddie and he puts his hand out. And I'm swinging and I'm kicking and I'm like, no, just let me, just let me at him. And he's like, no, I'm not going to hit a girl. I'm not going to hit a girl. I'm not going to hit a girl. And so he tags in, tags in his tag team partner, 
comes in. He's holding my head. And there's one point that he goes, oh, my God. They're holding my head. And Mata just goes, hey, hey, hey. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so eventually I got mad enough. I clanked their heads together. I stomped <laughs> on their toes. And I gave them a double eat defeat. And we went about our day. Like, what do you mean you're not going to get a girl? That's funny, but I did too. <laughs> It's so much fun, and I love matches like that. I love to take a step back from being all serious and angry all the time to just having yes. a good time. And the yes, fans love it. Like that's yeah. that's the other thing. You got to keep them engaged. You got to keep them good. And like especially if you you're following up a match that might have flatlined a little bit, you got to get that crowd back. You gotta you gotta get yeah. them to feel and want to watch. And as soon as as soon as it started, me and Deshaun double cross bodied them. Uh, Mod is holding me. Eddie's holding him. They clink us together. They start lifting us like crazy, and then Eddie puts down, puts down to Sean. Big thud, throws him down. Bang! And he's like, "Okay, all right, okay, now put her down." And then Coach C just goes, "No, no, 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 that's a girl!" And he's like, "Oh, it's a girl!" And he just drops me. I'm like, "Are you kidding? Me? Are you serious?" And then I ran into Eddie and chipped my tooth. Oh shit. <laughs> Ran right into his shoulder, <laughs> fell, rolled over, and went, and it's just, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, watching you talk about uh, the memories of your matches and such out of the RICW, Miss Sparks, you have been an absolute joy this evening. This has been fantastic, for real. Love it. I love it. This is this has been excellent. Uh, so before I do let you go, yes. I would like to ask you two things. And I don't know if you can answer uh, mainly the first one I'm going to ask. Uh, the first one, you are associated with the Chop Shop, RICW, and all of that. Do you have any news of where the future of the Chop Shop is right now? Fortunately, we don't. With COVID, it's it's very it's very hard to even find a place that would be willing to rent to us. Like in general, uh, like in general, trying to find a place that is open to having wrestling and having any sort of having a ring on the floor. Okay, so they can't have hardwood. It's certain things that we have to go about as a promotion as a whole to find a building, and now it's just ten times harder with COVID because they're less likely to let something in that might break COVID protocols, which we wouldn't anyway, but regardless, it, it's that fear of, okay, what is this going to do for the company or the place that we're going in? We we have been, you know, looking as we can, but it's it's hard right now. It's hard, it which is. sucks. I, like I said, I'd do anything to get back in a ring right now. God knows I need it. Well, I'll be keeping my eyes peeled out, and hopefully uh, the families that were under the umbrella of the chop shop can find a new home and rejuvenate what they were doing over there. That would be excellent. So I'll keep my eyes open. Thank you. And the second question I had before I let you go, is there anything, because we have been on a lot of downtime, and I'm just curious because I would like, we have you as our guest. Is there anything you would like to promote? Anything at all? It doesn't have to even have to be wrestling related. It could be your uh, Chawini, uh, whatever you want to talk about. Is there anything that you need to promote before we let you go? Because I want you to have your time to to give us what whatever you want. Your, it's your platform. Well, I do have shirts for sale um, up on Uber Prints. Uh, the the which call it's the printouts are not printouts. The links are on my Jacqueline Sparks page on on Facebook. I do have a couple out. Um, I also paint. I paint in my downtime. Um, nice. Actually, if you gaze behind me, I paint. Oh, look at that. I painted that. Oh, wow. I do a lot of abstract type of paintings. Actually, hold on one second. I'll grab you one. Please. Nice. I'm trying not to take my computer with me. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is my absolute oh, wow. that I've done. This was the first one I ever did. That I is painted, cool as hell. I did a The Crow one. Same type of thing. I did a... Uh, Jigsaw one as well, which I actually gave to Little Daddy Bravo. Um, mm -hmm. I've done quite a few of these now. I like them. I did one for uh, Laura Shaw, the fan, the one that hit your car. I did I one for her. <laughs> right. I did a Stranger Things one, which was she, was she was crying a river. I was screaming like an asshole, but 
my God, I gave her such a hug. I had to. She, I felt bad for yelling she's so at her. Innocent. Like, she's just so innocent. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Uh, if they don't cost like $1.3 trillion, I would love to have an artist such as Miss Spark who was stirring the pot original. I would love to see something like that. I would be willing for a commission of any, if that's what you, I mean, please. Let's work something out yes. because I would love to see an yes. STP I would original love to from do one. Miss Sparks. That would be awesome. That would be fantastic. I would love to do that. I I haven't picked up a set of paints in a while, and I really need to. I really Ooh. need to. So give me yeah. any excuse. Give me an excuse. <laughs> oh wow! Yes, wow. absolutely. That would be awesome. We must we must speak off camera about such subject. Yes. That would be excellent. Yes, Miss Sparks. You've been an absolute joy. We've had a lot of laughs. Uh, between this afternoon on that Fan Roundtable Awards uh, show, I mean, I think I snapped a rib from laughing so hard. <laughs> it, it was just off the chains crazy. And along with uh, smiling so much with Miss Sparks tonight, my goodness, today has been a fantastic Saturday, let me tell you. Uh, Miss Sparks, it's been such a pleasure, and I appreciate your your candid your candid stories and everything, because you know what? Some just don't want to open up and give us uh, like we were hanging out and talking. Not everybody wants to do that. And I appreciate you. I like to give of, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> good. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. And thank you for sharing your artistry and your Chawini. I've never <laughs> seen such a thing in the ever in my You're life. Okay. I, She's just like, Hey, what's going on? Hey, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I think I just like saying the word Chawini. That's why I, I keep saying it. I do too. It is fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. That is a very fun word. Uh, thank you for spending the time with us on Stirring the Pot. I appreciate that. Yes. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. This is Stirring the Pot with Don Kincaid and my very special guest. We had her Chawini. I just wanted to say it one more time. We <laughs> had her Chawini earlier. One Miss Jacqueline Sparks. The big champ, the universal champ, don't F with her. Thank you, Miss Sparks. Thank you. <laughs>